So this is our Dayton DTA-1 amp. We'll try to cannibalize it and retrofit it with a couple of capacitors and, and uh, resistors which we put on this surfboard. Uh, we discussed building these in the previous instructable. We will not be using the middle pin here because it's a ground and actually doesn't do anything. We already lifted it here, right there. And it's going to be easier to actually mount it without that actual pin in place. So I'll just cut that one off. Now it should be ready to go. And then as far as disassembling this guy, we have six screws. Two of them are tiny ones right here and another one right there. And the four are below the legs. So we'll just remove this. So here's the pot, we'll get rid of that one once we remove the amp. The amp is covered with these two plastic things here, so be gentle on this. They actually break quite easily, but of course you don't want to scratch the, the actual circuit board either. So if you just jam it a little bit in there, it should just kind of come off. our amp. Now these two go to the battery power because we're going to be powering ours from the actual power outlet which will give us more modular design should we ever have to open the case back. We will in effect simply cut these two guys off because we don't need them. Alternately you could use these two leads to to solder into the actual main power and that could save you some work. use that so we're getting rid of it. I'm also shortening some of these leads because these guys will be pretty close to being flush against the bottom of the case. And now we have to get these two guys removed again because we're not saving the case we can just simply tear it up. got our amp removed. Here's our amp. Now later we'll worry about putting some more hot glue here because these guys tend to break very easily as we found out. We're getting rid of now is the pot. We'll not be using this part at all. And then we'll pull off this plastic. The best we found out being just gently kind of pulling on each end until they kind of give. You want to be careful not to just damage the actual board under. So now we have these first two here and here are power. That's why this thing had the two red wires there. So while we'll pull all of these pins out, you have to be very careful when you're pulling them out that you don't pull the pads on each side. So what we'll do this, this is going to be a two-person job for us because it's much quicker that way, is we'll hold two soaring guns to each end, one to each end, and then gently pull on the pin out. These two here will we'll bridge afterwards because that's going to be our power. And then the remaining five, the middle here, is the ground, so we don't have to touch that one necessarily. And then the other two will basically just connect left and right. We discovered that these two are basically left and right, and they can connect to either or. We didn't find any differences going one way or the other. And then we'll have to do some changes on the on the board itself to improve the quality of sound. So you'll gently pull on these when, when I desolder them. So hold on to this and hold on one second. Let's do some voodoo magic here. So give it a second.
you grab it first and then I'll okay, okay, don't, don't pull it yet. second after I attach these things. Okay, try it now. Yeah. Go ahead. Thank you. Now, I'm going to have to also suction these because that's where the pins will go in. So what we'll do is we have a solder sucker and we need two. These guys pulled off. And again, the last two we will not again do anything to because they'll have to be bridged anyways. Okay, so we have nice open floor holes for our surfboard to go into, like so. So we'll just pop it in here eventually, just like so, and then solder it back in. Now we want to first bridge this guy here. So for that, we'll need some solder. As you do first couple of these, it's not a bad idea to test them between the steps to see where you may short circuit something and make it not work anymore, which we've done plenty of. And so, in that respect, you may want to just keep checking between the steps whether the board is still working. Now you can also use here a metal wire to connect these two, but we found that the solder does fine. So for the sake of efficiency, we're just applying solder to these. Theoretically, they could shake off eventually from the vibration side of speaker, but it is very unlikely. So we bridge this. Now, theoretically, if we connect this and test it out, uh, you will get this thing to power on automatically. It will not make any sound. And so if you want to test the sound out on each of the channels at maximum strength, because there will be no resistors in between, you would be connecting these two outer ones for one speaker and the two inner ones, these two for the inner speaker. This may not be bad time to check that. Okay, so here we have a really quick and dirty setup just to test it out. So I'll just connect these two guys to see. So the outer ones are still working. And it's still working as well. So that was the left inner one, and the outer one was right. When you look at the board, this is your left, this is your right. Okay, so we know this far is okay. Now we'll go ahead and add the board to it. Mm -hmm. 